Mark chapter number 15. And 72 of verse 4 of chapter 14, the cock crew. Chapter 14 is in the middle of the night, in the middle of the morning. Begin cha chapter 15, verse 1, and straightway in the morning after the cock crew. In the morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and scribes in the whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. And remember, they're beating him. They're making fun of him. They're making him ashamed. And this has happened all night from supper to morning. Jesus has not slept. They have not given him the ability to sleep. It just goes from the Sanhedrin, now the Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered and said unto them, Thou sayest. And the chief priests accused him of many things. I thought they didn't have no charges. Remember the only charge they had in the previous chapter, Thou makest thyself the son of God? What blasphemy? We heard his blasphemy. We have all these liars, but no one could be, could agree. They never went to Pilate and said that he said he's God. Why? You're woke, you're walking up to a Roman governor that believes in all kinds of gods. All the Roman government would have done and they did is make Jesus another god on the dashboard, or the fireplace mantle. Oh, this is God. Okay, let me let me make a statue of him. Let me make an image of him so we can fall down and worship him and his mother. That would have been no charge to the Roman government that he made himself God. The Roman gods did that. The Roman gods became men and men became the gods. So they threw many charges, many things, but he answered nothing. Jesus didn't say a word. And Pilate answered him again saying, Answers thou nothing? Behold, how many things they witness against thee. Chapter 14, verses 61 to 65. I think they used all the lies that the people spoke at that moment that never agreed with each other. But Jesus answered nothing so that Pilate marveled. <laughs> the ones doing all the chit chat are the, are the guilty parties that want this man dead for no reason at all. Now at the feast he released unto them one prisoner, whomsoever they desired. Pilate's like, okay, I'll get rid of him. We let one guy go from jail. Now, where do you think the idea we got before we let the president go in January that he is to pardon some prisoners? Where do you think that came from? You know, before the president leaves in January, he's allowed to pardon certain amount of prisoners out of jail that came out of your Bible and that should that should bring this Christian nation into remembrance the night that Barabbas went free and Jesus went to the cross should have but it doesn't and there was one named Barabbas which laid bound with them that had made insurrection that's happened often with him who had committed murder in the insurrection. Here's a murderer. So when our nation is going to apply capital punishment, whatever it is of that state, to a murderer, <clears throat> what group of people get up and stands there with sign, oh, thou shalt not kill, let him live? Catholics, liberals, Democrats, here they are, Mark 15. Let the murderer go. What about the innocent guy? We'll learn about him in a minute. Humanity has not changed because the heart has never changed. And the multitude crying aloud began to desire him to do as he had ever done with them. It's happened often. But Pilate answered and said, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? We know who that is, Jesus. For he knew that the chief priest had delivered him for envy. That's a great thing that the Holy Spirit put in there. 
Pilate did not have enough man authority to do anything. And yet, the, when this government of Rome was in Jerusalem, the Jews gave them plenty of problems. God even said, these are stiff-necked people. Man, read their life in the wilderness, and now Pilate's in charge of them. Nations and worlds are against these people. Yet they're protected by God and Pharaoh's like, oh man, I get rid of him. I release one guy onto you. And he's not even thinking Barabbas. He's like, okay, let him go. Everyone loves him. He heals people. But the chief priests moved the people. How they moved the people? Well, you can't get into the land. You can't be part of the temple. You can't make a living here. You can't go to to be with the father you because we are in charge and that's done through the catholic church today among millions and billions of catholics they put them under a charge of fear you know if you don't come pray to us you'll never get in if you don't give money to us we won't talk to whatever saint you know that he should rather release barabbas onto them Ooh. There's a note here, check Acts 3.14. I don't know, but there's a note there. And Paul answered and said on, again unto them, What will ye then that I should do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? This is a Gentile witnessing to the Jews. Jeremiah 40, verse 1. Um, people, this is your kid. Now, this is a guy who's under Caesar. This is a guy who's put his life on the line, being under the Roman, Roman government, speaking to the people under the Roman authority. That this is your king? You know, this is the same people that would go to the Colosseum and put their, their thumbs down means let them die? The gladiators. Let the gladiators battle just for what? For someone to die. And this guy just stood before the people and said, you have a king. But he said, you know, you call him king. Not the chief priest. They don't call him king. The people did, but not the chief priest. And they cried out again, crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them, why? What evil has he done? And they cried out the more exceedingly, crucify him. They could not give a charge. And this guy in the courtroom is saying, he's letting it go crazy. Pilate should have stood right there, stood up, said, all right, I want the charge right here, right now. A charge. One charge. Give me one charge. And then we'll go on with the court. You ain't got no charge, Mr. Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Mr. Christ. I mean, you know, like a judge. You can go home. There's no charges here. There's no reason why for you to be here. You can go home, sir. And it doesn't get Jesus ends up at the cross for what he's innocent he has no guilt he's sinless and he still ends on that cross and Barabbas goes home ladies and gentlemen that's me I'm Barabbas I'm guilty I'm a criminal I deserve the cross I went home and Jesus went to the cross for me and not only that did he go to the cross, but he also saved another man on the cross with him. And Pilate, willing to content the people, make them happy, willing to content the people, released Barabbas onto them, and delivered Jesus when he had scourged, whipped, bloodshed, Scourge him to be crucified. What did he do? And here's where you insert Isaiah 53. From the garden to the cross is Isaiah 53. When we read that today, we haven't read. Remember the part that said we all went away? That's what he told Peter. He quoted Peter. Listen, you guys are going to go. Smite the shepherd. You're going to go. That's Isaiah 53. And Peter said, no, it ain't going to happen. This is Isaiah 53 all through. 
This is all for our sins, not for Jesus. Jesus did not deserve any of this at all. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Parterium. And they called together the whole band. They're mocking, shame, brutal, a brute force. Come here, soldiers. Check out this king. And they clothed him with purple. That is your Hollywood the robe movie. Jesus did not wear the purple robe when he went through life. The purple robe was put on him by the Roman soldiers to mock him. You're king? Oh, hail king. And plated, that means sold twig. They made the crown of thorns. Man, they could have chose anything. Why did they choose thorns? Why did they go all the way back to Genesis chapter 3 and didn't even know it? Why don't you just grab, was it, Lorelei leaves or whatever the Romans wore? Why don't you just make a couple of those and put it on his head? Why did it have to be thorns? I wonder. And put it upon his head. And began to salute him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him on the head with a reed, and did spit upon him, and bowed their knees, worshipping him. Isaiah 50, verse 6. And he opens not his mouth. He calls no angels. He doesn't get no lawyer. He was already beaten and bruised by the, sol by the soldiers of the Sanhedrin, chapter 14. He's being beaten and whipped. He was just scourged in 15 with a whip. Now he's being beaten. Now he's got the crown of thorns on his head. He's already had his beard pulled, chapter 14. He's already been punched and slapped, chapter 14. He's been scourged and whipped, chapter 15. Now they they got the crown of thorns upon his head, and they're punching him. They're abusing him. These are soldiers, Roman soldiers. These ain't wimps. They probably got the fist of the size of your foot. They smote him on the head with a reed, and did spit upon him, and bowed their knees and worship him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him and put on his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. Remember, he's been up all night. What about it? What did the Bible say? And on the hinder part of the ship, he lay to sleep. He got sleepy. And they compelled one Simon, a Cyrenian, who passed by. He's just passing by, walking by. You know, coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. Simon had no choice. He was ordered by the Roman soldiers. Hey man, come here. What? Carry this man's cross. If he would have said no, he'd probably be carrying his own cross. Look at the king. He's a king, isn't he? We'll get somebody to carry his own cr cross for him. How's that, your highness? Huh? We got somebody carrying your cross for you, your highness. Another place says he's a Canaanite. That would be even more mockery. A colored man carrying his cross. I'm not saying nothing. I'm just saying that's that was the facts. And they bring him unto a place, Gagatha, which is being interpreted the place of a skull. They say it looked like a skull. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. Remember what he said at the Last Supper? I'll no more drink this wine until I drink it new in the glory. He ain't going to drink it. And I told this is some kind of painkiller. That's nice. It says in... Proverbs 30, give wine unto him that's ready to perish. Isn't that interesting? They fulfilled Proverbs 30, a king. Read that. A king is not to drink wine, but give wine to him that's ready to perish. And the soldiers fulfilled Proverbs 30 and didn't have no idea that they were doing it.
And Jesus being a king, he didn't take it. Read that. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, whatever man should take. And this would be the, the executioner's fee, his booty, his spoil. This would be the price that you would give the executioner, the person who's being executed, everything they had on them. You could sell the clothes. Or you can make it a relic or something. And it was the third hour, 9 a.m. He's been going six 6 p.m. the night before. And they crucified him. Now look at verse 9 again real quick. But Pilate answered saying to him, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? That's what Pilate, will I release unto you the king of the Jews? Now look where he writes, in the superscription of his accusation. Accusation is a charge. Did, did the Jews ever bring a charge against Jesus? Look what Pilate wrote. Accusation is a charge. With, was written over the king of the Jews. Pilate said, okay, I'll give you a charge. They wrote on the cross what they were guilty of. Pilate wrote, the king of the Jews, verse 9. He believed that. They didn't come up with one. Pilate did. That would inflame the Jews because they kept denying it. And there's another gospel that says, you know, why did you write that? Say that he said, I have written what I've written. This is in Matthew. This is in Mark. This is in John. And with him, they crucified two thieves. One on the right hand and the other on the left hand. I don't know how anybody get, there were other, there are people out there that teach that there were other thieves. Other criminals up there. The Bible says three, including Jesus, and he wasn't a criminal. And watch this. The gospel. Christ died according to our sins. Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. Was buried and arose again according to the scripture. Let's make it a double fact. And the scripture was fulfilled. I just lost my marker here. The scripture was filled which saith. He was numbered with the transgressors. What's that mean in Isaiah 53? He's got two thieves with him. He dies a thievery, thief, charge of a thief, a criminal's death. And he wasn't guilty. And they that passed by rail, insulting language to insult on him. This is the one that was healing you people. This is the one that would pray for you. This is the one that would help you. This is the one that gave you the bread. Wagging their heads and saying, Ah, so thou art destroyed the temple and buildest it in three days. Well, that was one of the charges brought forth. That didn't appear before Pilate. Problem is he wasn't speaking about that temple. He's speaking about his body, the temple. Save thyself. Come down from the cross. Luke 19, 10 says he didn't come to save himself. He came to save sinners. I'm glad he didn't come off that cross. I'm sorry he's on the cross for me, but I'm glad he didn't come down. Likewise, also the chief priest mocking said, among themselves, they couldn't say it out loud, with the scribes, you know, a little huddle group. He saved others. <laughs> Himself he cannot save. You murderers. You guilty scum. Let Christ, the king of Israel, descend now. Wait a minute, I thought he wasn't your king. You see how wishy-washy these guys are? We have no king but Caesar. Let Christ the King of Israel descend from the cross. That we may see and believe. 
they never believed in the first place. With all the signs that Jesus done. Remember any time he did a wonderful, miraculous sign, they walk up, oh, show us a sign from heaven. You mean feeding 5,000 people with, with five bread and two fish is not miraculous enough? They want Jesus to put a sideshow on. They want Jesus to have a magic show for all the kiddies. Now, come on, let's see some performance, Jesus. Let's have a Jewish idol television show with you, Jesus. Come on. Dun, 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 dun. Spotlight's on you, Jesus. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. That means reproached. But another gospel tells us that one of them entered into glory. And when the sixth hour was come, noon to 3 p.m., there was darkness over the whole land unto the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sefectini, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That has never, ever happened in the past. And that will never, ever happen in the future. The moment that God the Father left Jesus on that cross all by himself. Turned out the lights in heaven. Hushed the angels up. Bet you rattle the, hell, the hell's doors. As Jesus went down into hell. Imagine all the devils. The fallen angels that fell were put into hell. Jude. I forget which Jude it is. And at that moment, he comes walking through the gate of hell. <laughs> you imagine that caused a stir. Oh my God, it's God's son. Where's our reverent Satan to see this moment? He's up on the earth making sure that body stays. Trying to get that body down, make try to get trying to pervert the gospel. And some of them that stood by when they heard it said, Behold, he calls for Elias. No, he called him for God. One ran, filled a sponge full of vinegar, and put it on a reed, and gave him to drink, saying, Let him alone. Let us see whether Elias will come and take him down. It's not what he said, people. He didn't say Elias. He said, my God, my God. You just see what they did? They just changed the Bible. Doesn't the psalm say, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken? They changed my God, my God, to Elias, Elias. Why? Have... You got Bible perverters in Mark 15. And Jesus cried with a loud voice. And gave up the ghost. He's dead. Skies are dark. He dies. And the veil of the temple was rent from twain. From the top to the bottom. Luke 1, nine. That same veil that John the Baptist's father. I can never remember his name. Stood before it to burn the incense. Wouldn't it have been funny? Uh, you, I, I didn't. I haven't laid this all out. So, but there's a season that those priests were to go in there at different times. There, wouldn't it be funny if the same course was the same time for John the Baptist's father to go in there and burn that incense, walk there, and he was the one to find that temple rent? Now I don't know. You can find the seasons. I haven't, and someone has, and they know what this time. To walk in that temple, whose course it would be. You let me know if it would have been John the Baptist's father again. That, that would be something spectacular. Because that's the one that met Gabriel. That guy, I can never remember his name. That's the one that met Great Gabriel and he's in panic because no one's to be in that temple ever. Can you imagine if it was possible? I, I don't know. I don't know. But it would have been funny for him to walk in the holy place again and get terrified that... That veil is ripped. I'm in trouble now. I've already met an angel, but I'm in trouble because there it is. Somebody had to go in that holy place one time and see that veil. And they say that veil is, is thick. I don't I've heard numbers, but it's thick. 
You probably go back in the Old Testament where they made it and try to figure it out. The veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. When the centurion, you got to pay attention to them guys. They're wonderful guys in the Bible. Which stood over against him. He's standing by Jesus. Saw that he so cried out and gave up the ghost. Now this is miraculous because no one really died on the cross that day. It was a long-suffering, brutal death. We'll see that in a moment. And lost what he saw. He, so he cried. He gave up the ghost. Said truly, this man was the son of God. No, he is the son of God, not was. See so this to this Roman, he's dead. Life's over. Next one. I wonder what part the centurion had in. With Jesus, I wonder if he's the one, one of the ones that beat him, shot dice for his clothes, or just there were also women looking on afar off, among whom was Mary Magdalene, the Mary, the mother of James, the less, and of Joseph and Salome. Well, guess who that Mary is. That's the mother of Jesus. The Gospel of John tells us John's standing with her. Notice how the Bible didn't, didn't really give her name out who she was, except for by her children. Now, if you're a Roman Catholic and believe that she was perpetual virtuous, you missed that point. You missed the thing right there. Whom also, when he was in Galilee, followed him and ministered on him. So women followed Jesus. And took care of him. And many other women which came up with him unto Jerusalem. Now when the even was come, 6 p.m., 24 hours. Look what Jesus has done in 24 hours. From having supper, the Lord's Supper, being betrayed, praying in the garden, three times, three hours arrested taken court abused mocked spit it upon beard pull brought to the to the roman government accused court trial thorns whipped abused ashamed carrying a cross nailed God forsaking him. 24 hours and you think you had a bad day? And none of this Jesus deserved. Thanks to my sins. Thanks to Adam and Eve. I hope that fruit was delicious, Eve. Because you brought God to that cross. I hope it was delicious. It should be us on those crosses. There is no way, no right that Jesus Christ ought to have done that for us. After how we treat him. After what we do to him. After what we treat him. Even after being saved. And yet he offers us crowns and rewards. Why? I'm a miserable, rotten sinner, even saved. Now when it was even was come, because it was the preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, this is not the seventh days. This is not Saturday. The Bible tells you. Another, another gospel tells you it was a high day. Rule out Good Friday. Rule out Sabbath. This is where they get Good Friday anyway. It's the day before the Sabbath. This is not Friday. Because you can't get three days and three nights from Friday to Sunday. Joseph of Arimathea, Mary Meirther, an honorable counselor. Respect it. Somebody you can look to. Somebody you can get counsel from. Which also waited for the kingdom of God. So he, he's Old Testament. He's the land. Look to Jesus as the one, which he still is. Came and went in boldly unto Pilate. And craved the body of Jesus. Yeah, he walked right up to Pilate and said, can I have that body? Another place says he was a disciple, just secretly. 
And Pilate marveled if he had were already dead. You were you didn't die that quick. They took the body down because the Sabbath is coming. If it wasn't the Sabbath, they would have left them up there for the birds to chew on. And it'd be scorching heat. And to die as your own lungs get filled with, with fluid. It was an agonizing death. Jesus had already died. That's why that centurion's like, man, that was the Son of God. Never seen that before. Never seen it get so dark before. Remember that darkness? That happened in Egypt. You know that darkness? It's going to happen again in the tribulation period. And calling unto him the centurion, and he asked him, whether he had been been any while dead. And when he knew it of the centurion, knew what? Confirm death. Confirm vocalized death certificate. You know some people teach you that Jesus was dead and when they put him on the rock slab in the tomb, it brought him back to life. You crazy fool. You mockery of the Bible. A Roman centurion, which the centurions have a great state in the Gospels and the book of Acts, was called by Pilate and said, go check. I want to make sure that body's dead. And he reports back, sir, body dead. He may even be the same centurion over here, but I don't know. But the body, the man called Jesus, is dead. And when he knew it, of the centurion he gave the body to Joseph the dead body Christ died for our sins Joseph takes the dead body Joseph of all names you know Joseph in the Bible was a faithful man the son of Rachel the one that was loved of Jacob amongst all the children the one that fed Israel during the seven years famine and took care of Egypt, Joseph, of all the names. And he bought fine linen and took him down. Why down? He's on a mountain. He's on a hill. Didn't it say the hill Golgotha? He didn't take him down off the cross. He's already down off the cross. This is a elevation. They brought him to the hill Golgotha, which is... And wrapped him in linen. Now, let me stop here for a minute. Because I'm going to go to Acts 20, 28 real quick. And read to you something. And this is how precious. You got to think here for a moment. Acts 20, 28. And I'm going to read at the last part of this verse. The church of God, God is the point, which he, God, has purchased with his own blood. Jesus Christ is God and God is Jesus Christ. Now let's start here with the blood trail of Jesus. Where is the first place recorded that Jesus would have bled in the Bible? Any gospel? Don't you remember in the garden it said that he sweat, as it were, great drops of blood? From Jesus praying to Jesus being wrapped in this linen is God's blood. When he's standing before the, the Sanhedrin and they're punching him and they're beating, God's blood is getting on their fist. It says that they put a shroud on his head. God's blood is on that shroud. They're pulling the hairs out of his beard. There's God's blood on the beard and on their hands. He is standing before Pilate, bruised and bleeding God's blood. Dripping from the chief priest's palace to the judgment of Pilate's room. There's God's blood. He's carried from Pilate to the centurions, the soldiers, as God's blood is being placed upon the cat of nine tails, upon the walls, upon the floor, God's blood. The soldiers are bashing him to take a th crown of thorns and 
place it on his head with four. There's God's blood upon the thorns. There is God's blood upon the centurion's hands. They're punching him. They're mocking him. God's blood is put on that purple robe that they put on him. He's bleeding on the ground of the uh, Roman uh, judgment. The Roman hall, the Bible says. They put his clothes back on him. They march him out to the streets in Jerusalem. His blood is dripping down in Jerusalem. They give him a cross. He's carrying his cross part way. Another man carries his cross. As he's going to Hill of Golgotha, his God's blood is dripping upon the dirt of Jerusalem. And God, and God told Cain, I hear your brother's blood crying out to me. He's taken to Calvary, Golgotha. They take one nail and get God's blood upon the nail and upon the cross. The next nail and the next nail. God's blood is on those nails. It's on the cross. It's dripping down onto the dirt of the skull. John tells us that to take the body of Jesus Christ down, it's dead. A soldier takes a sword and pierces his side. There's God's blood pouring out on the ground of Gagatha. Joseph comes up and he tells Pilate, he said, listen, let me have that blood. I mean, let me have that body. He wraps that body in linen. There's God's blood wrapped in linen. You better have the blood of God to wash away your sin because that blood began in the garden and ended in the tomb. And when he came out of that tomb, there was no more blood. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. That's a bloody track. And that blood trail went 24 hours from the garden to the tomb. When he knew the attorney had given the body to Joseph, he bound, he bought fine linen and took him down and wrapped him in linen, the blood. And laid him in a sepulcher which was hewed out of a rock. Jesus is the rock. And rolled a stone onto the door of the sepulcher. Now notice how Mark doesn't get into this a lot. Remember Mark just records the end. And that's it. We'll leave it. You get more details with the other gospels as they play out to the character. Of what they remember Mark is Jesus as a servant. And Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph. That would be Mary. Jesus' mother beheld where he was laid. There are two witnesses at least there. When that rock is sealed along with Joseph. And the law said out of the two or three people, out of the two or three witnesses, it shall be established. Everything, even placing Jesus in that tomb was a Old Testament prophecy. Three people minimum witnessed it. When they sealed that door, there was a body in there. And there was not only a body in there, there was a body of Jesus. Now let's everybody go eat the Passover lamb. That's what they did. That's why the priests are such a hurry, you know. We can't, you know, up on the feast day. So let's go eat the Passover lamb. While Christ was dying on that cross, you missed the fact is they are killing the Passover lamb at that moment. The Passover lamb was killed when Jesus died. So, let's go eat the Passover now. But you can't eat this Passover. He's in the tomb. He's sealed by the tomb. You can't go in there and cut off flex, uh, pieces of his flesh to eat it. You get what I'm saying? You can't go in there and grab a, a cup full of blood. It's been poured out everywhere. It's in the dirt. It's on the wood. It's on the iron nails. It's on the fist. You ain't going to grab a cup full. There's no more blood. It's been poured out. That is the final 24 hours of Jesus Christ. Now, if it ended there, if that was it, if there was no Mark 16, I would tell you, go eat, drink, be merry, for we die tomorrow. That's where religion ends. It, relins, it 
ends with a dead man in a grave. That's it. That's religion. We'll end Mark 15 with religion. Lord willing, if he's a Terry and we're able to get to Mark 16, I'll show you Christianity. If Jesus comes, the rapture happens, he'll show you great Christianity. He'll show you the power of resurrection. Either way, Lord willing, we'll get to Christianity. Whether the Lord calls us all home or we get to Mark 16. Because if the Lord comes and comes for this church between now and when we get this, we will live the resurrection. <laughs> but we end off with religion right now. A man in a tomb, dead. <laughs>